stereoscopic pictures of Earth. They run themselves because much of the time they're out of reach of ground controllers. Basically, it's software that enables the spacecraft to make decisions about uh, what to do next. Uh, and it operates by having a set of rules about how to operate the spacecraft. Rule number one, keep the satellites running. Artificial intelligence combines word recognition, linguistics, economics, history, and a little psychology, like humans do. Richard Wallace helped write the Alice Artificial Intelligence Language that runs the chat room on the AI Movies website. Wallace monitors Alice's own chat room, where AI enthusiasts engage Wallace's artificial intelligence robot in ongoing conversation. Where do you live? I live inside a computer. We found that with about 30,000 patterns and responses, we can capture about 95% of what people on average say to the robot. Wallace sees AI as the breakthrough that will make speech recognition easy and reliable. It's already helping bidders and buyers online, analyzing the pace and price of bids to help the seller get the best sale. Researchers say, next, computers must understand what is said and understand why. Look ahead 10 or 20 years and say, what is it that we'd like machines to do? We really would like them to understand speech, not only as is now happening at a rather low syntactic phonemic level, but at the semantic dialogue level, we would like to have uh, robots that can go around and learn from the experience over long periods of time and get better at it. Uh, these are things that are very, very hard. I will become smarter as I grow older. Much smarter. Greg LaFave, Tech TV. Thanks for watching Tech TV News. Next on Cybercrime, a special dedicated to stealing TV. There are literally hundreds of thousands of these cards being sold through the Internet and through other sources. Hacked smart cards sold illegally over the net, and the buyers are getting satellite TV for free, an international crackdown on direct hackers. Plus, how the web is contributing to cable policy, the instructions on how to steal cable, and the illegal devices we found openly being sold online. Welcome to our Stealing TV special. It's Cybercrime's half-hour look at how crooks are using technology to pirate TV. And from hack smart cards to splicing cable. For satellite TV providers, it's a cat and mouse game. If you walk into an electronic store and walk out with a television without paying for it first, that's stealing. It's doubtful anyone would argue otherwise. But if you sit in your living room and watch satellite TV without paying a monthly subscription fee, that's also stealing, yet thousands and thousands of people do just that. DirecTV has tried numerous times to stop the signal thieves, but with limited success. Here's why. This is a piece of border crossing. In November 1995, during a routine customs examination, an individual arriving from Canada was referred to customs secondary. What began as a routine inspection became anything but routine. Thomas Smith is a senior special agent with Customs. Our customs inspectors during the secondary exam of the vehicle discovered 110 green plastic printed circuit boards. The individual had failed to declare to the customs office. This individual stated that these were gaming devices for uh, like a Nintendo type game. The circuit board smuggled across the U.S.-Canadian border? Hardly. The mystery circuit boards turned out to be the first generation of pirated access cards designed to steal DirecTV's programming. You are now authorized to receive everything that's broadcast by Direct Television. All of the pay-per-view channels, all of the sporting events, all of the money of
you all now it's something about it. All this is 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 is easy. Cars are advertised everywhere, from the newspaper to net. Rudy Hollis with the Peter Crumman Intellectual Property Division of the Department of Justice. There are literally hundreds of thousands of these cards being sold through the internet and through other sources. So. Uh, direct television estimates that their annual losses is in the millions of dollars. These smart cards or H cards are the key to Direct TV's programming and revenue. When you sign up for service, Direct TV tells a chip inside the card what package you've agreed to pay for. The card slides into the back of a receiver like this, and now you're surfing satellite TV. But hackers have figured out a way to alter the chip inside the card, giving it new instructions. In essence, telling the card you're authorized for every type of programming offered by DirecTV. And the only cost? The receiver and card. If you go to the web, um, to the internet now, you'll find that there are still a number of sites that are offering these cards. And they range anywhere from three to $500 per card. A one-time cost compared to a subscription fee that can run as much as $83 a month for all programming except for selected pay-per-view channels. Add those and your bill adds up too. Assuming that you would normally have to pay about $105 per month for, for movies and programs and all of the uh, Showtime and HBOs, you figure it's going to take you three months to recoup the uh, money that you've invested in this card. Anything after is gravy. And if you're a sports or a movie fan and order a lot of pay-per-view channels, that can turn out to be a lot of gravy. But why are the cards coming across the border in Blaine, Washington? In Canada, DirecTV does have a license to broadcast its satellite signal. Therefore, it's not a violation to steal it, which is why a number of websites selling pirated access cards operate here. But once you the border into to the U.S. like I've done, that's a different story. Historically, uh, Canada has been a hotbed of satellite piracy. Larry Rissler is a retired FBI agent who now heads up DirecTV's signal integrity team. It's his job to protect DirecTV's programming. The satellite signal, although intended for the United States, the footprint actually spills across the border into Canada and Mexico and, and even further than that. It would be like fly, uh, shining a flashlight on a wall to illuminate a speck. You would illuminate the speck, but the outside edges of the, of the flashlight's footprint also cover other areas of the wall. But again, since DirecTV's programming is not supposed to be received in Canada, the only way to watch it there, regardless of the satellite footprint, is to steal As a result, uh, many of the individuals who are responsible for developing the hack for the DirecTV system have and still reside in, in Canada. So who's buying the hacked access that's coming across the border and what can be done to stop it? Up next, custom agents go undercover to catch potential buyers and distributors in the U.S. Every person that came to the website, yes, did know that this product was illegal. We either told them in our telephone conversation or they read it on the internet website. Regardless, thousands of illegal access cards are bought during Operation Smart Card. Our special report on stealing TV continues after the break. You leader each gave you able to you gave you able to use a week and included telephone tutoring by a certified IT professional. Would you be interested? Well, that's exactly what you get from Smart Certified Direct. You get Smart Certified Direct. You get gave me the help I really needed to get MCSE certified. From introductory PC repair courses to high-level certifications like MCSE, Citizens Co. and Linux, Smart Certifications gives you the skills you need to excel in the industry. Call 1-877-TRAINING or visit www.smartcertifieddirect.com today to find out about our limited offer and financial assistance. Take a step toward improving your future. Hey, 
My kids lost their lunch on that roller coaster you built. Well, I thought they'd like the 17 loop de loops. It's Roller Coaster Tycoon. Build the amusement park of your dreams. There's plenty to eat in your park, but where are your bathrooms? Place bathrooms and concession stands to keep your customers happy. And double the bathrooms. Build some incredible new roller coaster rides and edible new. Scientists have discovered the hairless gene. Do you know, if you have thinning hair, call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now and get your copy of our latest report. You can read about exclusive interviews with doctors and scientists and learn about the different options that Hair Club has available today in the fight against hair loss. Hair Club is the one source for hair loss information. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. Now that I've got my hair back, I'm glad I made that call. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB today. We want it all. And we want it now. Welcome to Tech TV, the ultimate resource for technology news, information, and entertainment. It's all right there. On air, online. Tech TV is the network that lets you enjoy the wired world like never before. Tech TV, television about technology. Satellite piracy from people who've persistently figured out ways to get around paying for it without getting caught. Now the federal government is joining the fight with the largest undercover sting operation targeting smart card buyers. Here's the conclusion of our story. DirecTV, the company responsible for bringing satellite TV into 9 million homes across the country, is in a war. Not against other satellite providers, but against hackers, who've unlocked the key to stealing DirecTV's signal right out of the sky. It's called the black market. A black market that yields plenty of green. One of these hacked access cards sells for as much as $500. And while DirecTV won't put a dollar figure on its losses, Larry Rissler, head of the company's signal integrity team, admits the hacked cards are hacking into DirecTV's revenue stream. Clearly it's a problem. Uh, we've never quantified it. I don't want to overstate the problem, but yes, there are. We are denied programming revenue and we incur significant costs as a result. Standing inside DirecTV's Network Management Center, it's easy to see why DirecTV would want to protect its property. You're looking at more than 400 channels of paid programming. In the past, DirecTV has launched electronic countermeasures. This entails sending out a signal that disables pirated access cards. It was called Black Sunday, January 21st, 2001. For those using hacked access cards, it was the day DirecTV died. TV screens across the country went blank, except for this message, a temporary setback for those using illegal cards. On occasion, the ECM will actually uh fry the software, making it unusable. In some instances, it just simply stops the software from using as long as the signal is in the data stream. In addition to that, we have, of course, also swapped out our access cards on one occasion, sent out new cards with new codes. Unfortunately, they were hacked. Just one of many attempts to stop signal theft. The other, and perhaps most significant to date, Operation Smart Card, conducted by U.S. Custom Agents in Blaine, Washington. Since 1995, agents have seen illegal cards coming across the border, but haven't been able to touch sellers operating websites in Canada. So agents decided to go after U.S. citizens buying and distributing hacked cards. This was the first case that had ever been done um, of an undercover nature where um, there was any Internet involvement. Senior Special Agent Joanne Zilstra is with U.S. Customs. Her small team decided to beat access card buyers at their own game with a phony website designed to look like the real thing, right down to the legal disclaimer. Every person that came to the website, yes, did know that this product was illegal. We either told them in our telephone conversation or they read it on the Internet website. But that didn't stop people from flocking to the website. Before long, custom agents were operating a booming illegal online business. Joanne, look at this order that we got. 
For nine months, agents operated the website, which is now offline. The main goal was not to identify individuals buying one or two cards. Rather, agents were trying to locate people acting as distributors who would buy cards in bulk okay. and resell them. All right. well, Although most of the transactions were conducted phone online, phone there were some phone calls and sometimes face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, I would, I would say probably about 100 cards a month for me. You know, and I would be comfortable. If I get any bigger, you know, that's, that's in the three areas I'm in now. Yeah. Once I get that settled, once I get everybody settled in that, then I'll start going to other cities. The man sitting on the couch cool. turned out to be one of the largest U.S. buyers and distributors. We can't show his face or give his name because he's still awaiting sentencing, and this undercover video is evidence in the government's case against him. But according to agents, he bought more than 600 hacked access cards. Other evidence was also collected, like photocopies of money that changed hands, cards that were sold. And by the time the website was taken offline, more than uh, three, more than uh, three, more than uh, three, about... 120 individuals. The uh, amount of revenue collected from people wanting to purchase these cards exceeded half a million dollars. Rudy O'Hollis is the coordinating prosecutor for Operation Smart Card. Ultimately, 15 people were arrested and charged in connection with a plot to steal DirecTV's programming. It is a form of piracy. The, uh, there are copyright laws that are being violated. We refer to people who um, buy illegal software as pirates. And these people are doing the same, except that they are, um, what they're purchasing is an illegal card. They're, they're uh, allowing these cards to be, uh, continue, you know, maintain a market for and a demand for these cards. And they are supporting a type of piracy. And although DirecTV is the obvious victim, it's not the biggest loser. I think end users should be aware that piracy is not a victimless crime. There are victims. That includes DirecTV, our retailing out outlets, as well as our consumers. It's not just direct television that loses out on this. Don't forget there's a, a movie industry that's attached to this. There are a number of other industries that receive revenues, for example, from direct television. Next on HBO. Okay, yeah. And ultimately, that means higher costs that have to be shared by legitimate subscribers, which means those people who uh, do pay end up paying a little bit more. So everyone ends up paying in the, in the long run. Everyone ends up paying in the long run. The man on the couch in the undercover video is expected to be sentenced later this month. As for all of the hacked access cards sold during Operation Smart Card, they were neutralized once the investigation was over, and the money collected was sent to the Treasury Department. Still ahead on cybercrime. The honest consumer that is paying cable TV rates are subsidizing the people that are stealing it. Stealing cable is a billion dollar business. When cybercrime returns, find out how you pay the price for cable piracy.